Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday edition of Getting Back to Zero. Uh, my name is Jeff, and I'm your host for the evening. Uh, we are going to have a, a little guest. We're going to talk about community and the pros and cons, the reasons why we engage in a sobriety community, maybe the reasons why we don't, uh, the benefits, the, the negatives, all that good stuff. I am going to run across the, the bottom. I think I can click it right here, a banner. Uh, I, I've been putting together our new website. It's gettingbacktozero.com. And the, the bulk of it is in place. So you can check it out. I've actually got a picture section set up where people can dump their show us uh, your pictures of what sobriety looks like to you. I've got uh, links to some people. I've got a lot of uh, uh, self-help links. Some people that are, are linked on there, like our yoga and uh, breathing and trauma, some of who you've met, some you have yet to meet that you're going to meet here in the next week or so. But it's a growing thing, and we're really evolving with the page. So uh, check it out and uh, dump into the any of the feedback. There's a bunch of feedback buttons. Anything you'd like to see, anything you'd uh, like to see less of, whatever your thoughts are, so we can improve that. But uh, good Tuesday. I'm not sure who all saw. I'm going to bring in my guest real quick. Um, where are you there? Got gotcha. you. Uh, Todd, how you doing, buddy? Welcome. I'm good. How are you, Jeff? Not not bad. I know you've been on once before, and I'm, I'm thrilled you're back with us. I had, a, uh, before we kick into it, a weekend, uh, some people saw we went uh, Saturday night, had a wedding and a, uh, a wedding shower, back-to-back -back events. And uh, the alcohol was flowing, <laughs> except uh, into these lips, which is which was the goal. But it, it was it was good. You know, I, I had a great time, but I also I, I took to the wedding and the uh, wedding shower accountability. I had a lot of people that a were there to support me and B would have kicked my butt if I had if they had seen me with a, a drink in hand. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I one of the things that I do with those situations, I, I grab a, my diet Pepsi or an iced tea or uh, uh bubbly water or whatever in one hand and maybe a, a cup with some ice, I found that it's it's tough for people to hand you a drink when you're already holding something in each hand. And it's also tough for me to grab a drink and have to make the decision yeah. of which to drink to grab if I already have something in my hand. So I grab the, uh, I, I make the decision before I have to make the decision. And uh, so it was good. Anything exciting on your end this weekend? Uh, no, well, a little, little bit. Went down to Kansas City for a soccer tournament, uh, my daughter's soccer tournament, and went to the U.S. game, uh, soccer game Thursday night. So we went down a day early to, uh, to go watch that and then spent, got some quality time. We, we took, I took one other kid with me. So, um, did you it was blow your Vavuzu or whatever they're called from the, uh, no, no, I did, I did not. <laughs> I, I, that was a few years ago. A lot of people might not even remember that, but that, uh, that, that I just remember sounded like a, a swarm of bees in the stadium. It was just comical. <laughs> it was. It was very. I, I found them very annoying and still do. But yeah, yeah they, well, were they, everywhere. they banned them from yeah, what I hear. I as think well, they should have. <laughs> You're no fun. You're no fun. <laughs> I know. Who, who wants to listen to the you know announcers or or self <laughs> right. think or talking to a friend when we'd rather hear just that drone for for four hours? So right. Well, look. Um, I know you had we, you and I talked last week and that kind of brought up this topic. I, I think you've had a couple of incidents where you talked with some people that kind of generated this topic. But I wanted to discuss community uh, and primarily uh, sobriety support community, the reasons for it, the reasons maybe we shy from it. I know that um, I didn't want to tell people that I was doing this sobriety thing because I was afraid I was going to fail. And, uh, but now I see the benefits from it. So I'm just curious, wanted to kind of just chit chat about that, but I, what was, how did this come about? You were talking to some people, I think at lunch or something. What was, um, yeah, we, I, I met with some people, uh, last weekend here in town who I, I, I tried to get together a, a group of people. I actually sent out a, a text, to every person in Omaha who I knew that was not a drinker or was, was I had talked to about making changes to, to how they drink. And 
that sort of thing. And I, I came up with a list of nine people. <laughs> why did, why, what, what prompted you to do this? You know, I, I had, I, ever since I quit, I've been lamenting that I don't, my, my social circle has not really changed. Our social lives have changed a little bit, but I mean, what I enjoy doing has changed, but, but our, our kind of wide social circle really hasn't changed much. And some of that's good. Um, but I have lamented, you know, that I don't have a, I don't have kind of a group of, of non drinkers that I do anything socially with on a regular basis. And I was talking to someone in another city from, you know, TLC, this online sobriety support group. And she said, yeah, we have a group that gets together for like breakfast once a week on the weekends. There's like five or six of us. And I thought that sounds awesome. I wish I had something. And then I kind of just, you know, lamented that I didn't have it. And then, um, I was talking to someone else I knew who we, we have a mutual friend who, who gave up drinking recently and, and she was echoing similar thoughts. Um, and I said, and I was talking to her, I said, I'm going to try to do something about this rather than complain about it. I'm going to try to do something. So I got together this text and I just sent it out. I said, Hey, you know, some of us know each other. Some of us don't. Um, this is my universe of people that I know that either don't drink or have talked about, you know, making changes to how they use alcohol. Um, if you would be interested in getting together on a regular basis, you know, shoot me a text privately and I'll put you on a new list and, and we'll see what happens. And so um, I think I had like five or six people write back and say they were interested, which I, I was, I was happy with. And um, we got together last weekend for the first time, we just got together for coffee. And one of the women there was saying, um, she said, this was really good timing for me. Um, she goes, I, I needed this. I didn't really know I needed it, but uh, this was good timing for me. Um, and it kind of just, I, 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 I loved it anyway, but it, it kind of drove home for me the whole idea of how good it can be for people who are, who are have quit or want to quit or want to do something about their drinking to, just be with people, be with similarly, you know, like-minded people. Um, it's just, it, it especially, you know, we, we've talked about this before, but especially in this world where alcohol is everywhere you go, doesn't matter if you're family, no family, kids, no kids, work, out, outside of work, wherever you go, it's there. And people who are drinking are usually there. It's just everywhere. And so it's nice to have a little pocket of space with, with people um, who are kind of on the same, same wavelength as you are when it comes to alcohol. Did she tell you why it, this was so needed for her or why? You no, know, not, not specifically. I think it was in the context of, um, you know, she was having some, <laughs> some issues. Um, I think at, at home with, with her husband in terms of, and very similar issues to, it sounded very familiar to me from, from when I was early on, um, just about, you know, not necessarily her husband's drinking per se, but, but social activities they had going on that were involving drinking that were just generally annoying to her. Uh, and I, and, and, and that took me back right away to, to early on in, in my, after I gave it up, because I, I distinctly remember a couple of weekends where it, it I'm sure it wasn't like this, but it seemed like we were having a party with the whole neighborhood and it was going till two in the morning. And I'm like, what this, what, what, why is this happening now on like the fourth weekend I'm trying to do without alcohol? <laughs> where were you when, uh, yeah, I, I, I never had a, a girl pay any attention to me until I got, uh, you know, my now wife, but as a girlfriend. And it was like, where were you when I was single? You know, I had no, yeah. now that I, uh, but anyways, that's another yeah. story. But so when, when you started your journey with sobriety, did you tell people or, and I, and I am assuming, you know, in your family, but uh, outside of that. Yeah. So not, not right away. I, um, because when I, when I started this last time, I, I had previously, I had done two other three month stints where I, where I stopped drinking for three months and I, and I didn't have any, 
intention at the time of quitting. So it was just like a three month thing I was going to get through to prove to myself I could do it. Um, and, and maybe, you know, kind of do a reset. And so everyone knew I had done that before. And so this last time it started out as another three month sabbatical. And I, I knew in the back of my mind that it was different this time. And I, I knew I, I, part of me knew from the beginning that I was, I was going to quit, but I did not, I was not ready to admit that to myself or anyone else at the beginning what, what made it what made it different what what made you feel that hey this is uh this might be the one you know i had i had had a weekend in arizona um with family friends celebrating a family friend's 40th birthday and it was um it was me my wife no kids it was all adults and it was all family friends who i've known forever and um I, you know, my things had been a little loose leading up to this trip with my drinking. I, I, it had, you know, I would go through, I would go through stages where I would, I would have it relatively under control and then things would get loose. And I had been in one of those stages where things, things had gotten loose. I was just drinking more. Um, and I had a night this week, that weekend in Arizona, um, where, you know, we were drinking all day. We were sitting by the pool. Everyone's having a good time. Most people are drinking normally. I'm drinking like I normally drink. And so dinner rolls around and I'm wasted. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife tried to sneak out of the room. You know, we came back to the room, got ready for dinner. It's time to go back down for dinner. I was, <laughs> I was, I was sleeping. Hoping she, you were passed out. Oh, she's trying to tiptoe out of the room so she doesn't uh, have to deal with me and just leave me there. And I wake up. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get in the shower. She's like, no, why don't you stay here? Um, so I, I, I go down. But I'm the life of the party. Everyone I know. Wants I know. To see me stumble and drool on him. I know. I know. Um, I, I get up. I go back. I go downstairs to dinner. We kind of have this private room, and we're sitting there. And, and and my parents are there. And my wife says at one point, she, my parents are at the other side of the table. It's kind of a big table, um, but she, she whispers in my ear. She says, "Your parents are looking at you." And I'm, I was like, what? She's like, your parents are looking at you. Meaning like, you're so wasted. Mm -hmm. She's trying to get me back up to the room. And I, in my mind, all I need to do is eat dinner and everything will be fine. Right. Um, <laughs> it absorbs it all and you're good to go. Start right. Over. And I'm, I'm good to go. And, um, and, and that, that was kind of it for, for that particular conversation. But that moment uh, stuck with me like, like few moments had, and I woke up the next morning and I couldn't, that was the first thing I thought of was her saying, your parents are looking at you. And, and I, I knew my parents are wonderful people and I knew they weren't looking at me like you were disgusting. I can't believe you're embarrassing us like this. Uh, cause that's not how they are. And, and because that's not how they are, I knew, I knew they were probably looking at me like, Oh, this is sad that our oldest son, who's 44 years old at the time, is this I'll take drunk. mad over sad. I'd rather you be mad. Sad, oh. that's a low blow. I can't fight back on that one. No, and I was, I, was, I was taken aback by how much at 44 years old, a grown adult with four kids of my own, how much I was um, affected by, by knowing I made my parents feel that way. Uh, it was like, I, it was like, I was a little kid yep. and I made my mom cry. Yeah. I, <laughs> that, I, oh, I totally understand. Uh, it just gutted me and, and I, it just gutted me. And so I did the usual beating myself up, like never again, I'm not going to do this. I can't do this, but it was, it was just different. I was just that, that moment made me, made me finally say to myself, like, what, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? Um, why do you keep doing this? And nothing you've, nothing you've tried up to this point has changed things. So why don't you try something different? Because what, what I, what I was doing and, and nothing was working. And so I, when I got home, I said, okay, three months, I'm doing it again. And that was all kind of publicly I committed to but in the back of my mind, I was like, it's, I think it's going to be different this time, but I, I was not ready to 
like I said, admit to myself and admit publicly that it was going to be for good. And I think one of the reasons I, I was, I was afraid to say it's for good is because I wasn't ready for the, like, I wasn't ready for people saying why. And I wasn't ready for, in my mind, that meant people were going to think I was a raging alcoholic that drank from sun up till sundown, never yeah. saw his kids. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I yeah, wasn't. There's no middle ground. You're either right. a non drinker or you are uh, Otis Campbell from uh, Andy Griffith. You know, which yeah. Was, yeah. At that, at that time, that in, in my mind, though, that was who gave up drinking. Those pe the people who gave up drinking were the ones who put their car in a ditch every weekend. Who who got arrested, who um, lost their jobs? Great you justification know. for me not to quit drinking. Oh yeah, because yes. I didn't do any of that stuff. Right, right. So I I was I did not I was not ready to face the public, and so it's kind of a a a transition into that, and to kind of ease my way into that, I started with the well, I'm just I'm just doing it for three months, and I'm going to see where it goes. Uh, that was my way of of kind of going public with it, but not, not really going public with, with what I was thinking about doing. Cause I, cause there were, there were a lot of issues tied up with it, with that, 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 that was going around in my head that I just couldn't get a handle on. So I remember my, my, so about like three, three or four months in my, my therapist said, you know, you're, you're doing this alone. You need a community. And, and I didn't, at the time, my, my initial reaction was, no, I don't, I'm fine. I'm doing fine. I'm, I haven't drank in three months. I, I don't, yes, yeah, sometimes I miss it, but I'm not, I don't feel like I'm on, I'm teetering on the verge of like drinking again. Um, I'm doing fine. And, and that happened to be right around the time, um, I read, you know, Laura McCowan's book, We Are the Luckiest. And then it happened to be around the time that she started up this TLC group around COVID um, that started these online sobriety support group meetings. Which is where you and I met. Which is where you and I met. Yeah. And I remember when these meetings started, I don't know if I would have been drawn to them had my therapist not said, you need a community. Because again, my initial thought was probably like, oh, you know, that's nice that they do that, but that's not really my thing. Um, had you revealed anything mm -hmm. to outside of family at that point? Um, no, I had not. Um, and it was around, it was around the, between the three and four month mark that I, that I said to my wife out loud, I think I need to stop drinking for good. And it's funny. I, I laugh about this now, but I literally, I spent a week rehearsing that. <laughs> And I spent a week, you know, hey, today's the day I'm going to say it out loud. Well, you know, maybe tomorrow. I don't need to say it out loud. Today. Yeah. Uh, and I finally said it out loud. Um, and it felt really, it felt totally liberating. It felt really good, better than I thought it was going to. It was like a weight lifted off my shoulder. And I, and I still didn't announced to the world at that point, but I would tell people if they asked, like, do you think you're done for good? And I would say, yeah, I, I think I am. Um, so it was kind of a, and I, and I would, and my family and friends kind of knew where but, I was. But going. I used it because I'm really enjoying this, not because I need this. Right. It was because, right. you know what? I'm sleeping better than I ever have. Uh, you know, so there's my, you know, that, that was the reason that it was all it had nothing to do. I wasn't going to say because I'm a friggin' fall down drunk and I have to be done. Yes. You know, I said yeah. it's because I've lost three pounds and you know, da, 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 da. Yeah. So it's funny how, how, how much more comfortable I've gotten um, say, saying things like that. Like I, I, I don't know when the first time I, I, said this to someone out loud, but I had the realization somewhere along the way that I, I could not, I, I could not control my drinking to the extent I wanted to. And I, I could do it for a certain amount of time. And then I, and then until I couldn't, and then I could do it for another certain amount of time. But at the end of the day, it was, it, it, it took me a long time to accept the fact that it was impossible for me to do that. 
And, and, and I can tell people that now, but, but to your point, I would never have told them that like three or four months in, cause that sounded, sounded too much like I had a problem, but you know, mm-hmm. guess what I did. Um, but I think the, the, the community part of when I jumped into the, the TLC, the, the thing that really, the, I mean, there were a hundred good things about it for me, but one of the best was it kind of flipped. It helped flip things for me from a perspective of, I, I have to give this up because I have a problem and I'm, I can't control my drinking because I'm a failure and blah, blah, blah. And, and woe is me, you know, it kind of sucks that I'm going to have to go the rest of my life without alcohol, but it, but it's something that needs to be done. It flipped from that to, you know, there's some, there's some really good stuff out there if you want to get sober and you want to kind of get through the work. Um, and I started to see that and I started to understand it and I started to see glimpses of it and I would hear people talk about it. And, you know, if you, if, if you haven't been through it yourself, it only means so much, but it means something. And it means it, it just put, put seeds in me of, man, look at how, look at, look at how great sobriety is for that person who's been doing it for a year. I want to get to that point. Um, and it may, they probably didn't have, here's my mind, you know, this is how I work, but they probably didn't have the problem. Like I do. They probably, you know, they were one of those, gosh, I had two glasses of wine this week and and I just, I need to stop, you know, and I'm sorry. I had two and a half cases uh, by, by Saturday evening. What are you talking? You know, so that was, uh, it it was still, it was still difficult. It was almost, I I could never get to that point. I could never get that happiness because I was too far away from it was my, my reasoning. That's interesting. Um, And I will say I did, I was just telling someone this today. Uh, and I, I wish, I hope I could figure out a way to to communicate this to people as effectively as I can. I think it's hard when when you're trying to communicate to someone like, you know, something that's down the road if they stick with it, because because you you have to take a little bit of a leap of faith. You just do. Mm-hmm. But but I I had I had zero understanding or awareness of of how enjoyable life can be without alcohol. Um and, and I have been blown away by how much I enjoy life without alcohol. I've been shocked at how much I enjoy it. I never knew, I never knew this was out there. Right. Um, I, I thought it was going to be, you know, on balance, a net positive decision to stop drinking. I knew it was a good decision. I knew deep down it was something I needed to do. And I knew I would be happy with the decision. But I thought it would be, you know... <laughs> 5149 net positive. Mm, right. Um, and it's been it's been so much more than that. And it and it's 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 been it's been so much more positive in, in ways that I couldn't even comprehend two years ago. And if you would if you would have told me then, you know, I'll I'll bet you a million bucks that you enjoy life without alcohol so much more than you did with it, I would have said, I'll take that bet in a heartbeat. There's no way that's gonna be true. Um and and it, it absolutely is. And I don't, I mean, I, maybe I would have gotten to that point, um, along a, about the same amount of time. I don't know, but I think I got there, um, maybe sooner and I got there easier, I guess, because of the community aspect. Um, it just helped flip the script for me and, and, and help me stop looking at it as something that I had to do that even though it was good for me, you know, it's like eating broccoli. Um, you just got to do it. It flipped it from that to, you know, maybe there's some really good stuff out here if you just keep at this. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting. Cause I, I, I kind of stumbled on this, this uh, red light, green light analogy a couple of weeks ago that really made sense to me because Sobriety was a red light. It was a stopping. It was, it's over, come to a halt. It was, everything was a, it was a stop. That's what sobriety was to me. And now it's a green light. Now it's a go to actually 
surpass anything I ever expected with it. Yeah. And and I always laughed at people that said that, but it's so true. <laughs> I, I thought, okay, you are you are a boring, boring, oh, you know, you've got no life if you're thinking sobriety is fun. You know, yeah. this is uh Wow, we went to the library last night, and I they, it was a three for one checkout bargain. They, you know, okay, I, I no, this is not, but it's the opposite. I, I am is. thrilled, and I'm amazed every time. But for me, community is sobriety was the words, the lessons, the books. You know, I'm an AA, or so you hear about the, the you know the big book. It was the words, community put life into those words. They were, they were just words. They were a formula and the community is when I, they, they became something of excitement, anticipation of hope. You know, there, it put community, put the emotions into, that's what it, I guess my best, best to now it put emotions into, into uh, this, this whole thing. When I thought it was an emotionless, uh, you know, that's what my life was going to be. Just a dull. Hmm, I guess it's a Friday night. I'm gonna sit home and do nothing again. Yeah, because I'm sober. Yeah, it, and that's what community. That's what community showed me. And I went. I don't know if you know my story, but I went nine years sober years ago. Um, I quit. I didn't do any kind of a program. I just quit. Uh, there was a program called Rational Recovery, and everything about what I did was me and me alone. I never talked to anyone about it. It was just my program. Looking back, I was miserable. I wasn't living life. I was surviving life, but I wasn't mm. living it. And I had, I had, I, I had zero community. I didn't talk to anyone about it. I had no one else that was going through it. The only, only, um, God, it's funny you say this because the only a community I knew of was right by a Taco Bell in our neighborhood was where the, well, not in our neighborhood, but fairly close, was where the AA uh, uh, a center was. And I used to go on through, like, watch them, <laughs> those people, and go, oh, look, those are those, yeah. those, are those drunks. I, I mean, it was like they were some, you know, uh, don't get too close to them. They were, you know, that was like, here, Tim, you know, come here, look, look. Yeah. There goes those AA people. It was, yeah. it was a, uh, it was fascinating to watch them, but it was that was the only thing I knew of community, and I wanted nothing to do with that community because that was a that was a sad looking, you know, yeah, um, thing. So, hope I, I think everything is new, but my, you know, I didn't tell anyone for a lot of reasons. A, um, look at weight loss. Look at. Um, uh, running, look at uh, learning to play uh, the drums, which I since have given to someone else. Look at so many things that I was going to do, and I'm going to I'm going to become great at this. I'm going to be. A, I didn't tell anyone because then it was easier to fail because I didn't have to like, hey, how's that uh, marathon training going? Uh, I ran I ran down to the block once, uh, uh, started yeah. trying hitchhike back home. And I, you know, threw away the shoes. You know, I, I didn't want to tell anyone any of the things because I was, I don't know, I, I guess so many things I've taken on, I never completed or, or didn't uh, achieve what I wanted. So I didn't want sobriety. I didn't want to tell everyone I was quitting because when they saw me at, you know, the next place drinking a beer, hey, I thought you, hey, I, you know, I didn't want to hear all that stuff. Yeah, that yeah. The, I had zero confidence in myself. Well, that, that's exactly why it took me a little while to say the words out loud to my wife that I that I think I needed to stop for good because I knew I knew once those words left my mouth and she heard them and she heard me say that and she heard me acknowledge that, then every time I drank after that would be, you know, a um a failure. I I you know, I had a lot of Part, part of the reason why I why I even started looking at stopping drinking was the dynamic with my wife and it was starting to affect our marriage. And, you know, for, for some reason, she didn't love me getting shit faced 
and being the drunkest person in the room all the so, time. Just like Elizabeth, so damn picky, you know? And yeah, you know, forgive me for, uh, you know. <laughs> so I had a lot wrapped up with that where a lot of my shame and regret and and beating myself up after after I was not happy with how much I drank, some of that was connected to what I knew it was doing to our relationship. And, and I knew this. And so I knew if I said to her, I think I need to stop drinking for good and then didn't, uh, that's just a, um, Oh, that would have been a big blow. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I knew that I knew that deep down and that's why it took me. That's why I rehearsed it for a week before I said it out loud. And that's why I put it off you know, the first day and the second day. Cause I just, I just, I knew, I knew, I knew it was, I knew the gig was up once I said those words out loud. Um, I, think, I think I was the same way because when I, um, when I finally said those words, I also checked myself into rehab because I, I, I knew I, I don't have another chance of going back on those words. Right. Once I, I it, that was it. It was like one and done. So I had to, when I was ready to make that commitment and say, I, 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 I lose it all. If I don't do this, I have to, I, it, I threw everything into it. And that was, that was rehab because I figured that's going to give me seven days of momentum of discipline. That's going to break some of the cycles. I got a better chance that way. A, the money we spent on rehab, um, you know, there was a chunk of change and I didn't yeah. go to the one where I didn't get like the commercials. No one put hot coals on my back. And I didn't get the uh, uh, go zip lining and have the private chef. Yeah. While I went horseback uh, riding, preparing my dinner. This was close to as close to jail as I ever want to come. But <laughs> it, it was yeah, it was uh, where where where's the uh, uh, where's the the dining room table? We don't have one. And give us your shoelaces and go yeah. in line. But, yeah, that's what rehab was to me. But same thing with um, when I got out. I, I jumped right into um, AA meetings and I didn't want to go, but I had, I had to do it. And yeah. I think, um, I, th I think at that point I put myself on the line and made a lot of those announcements. Um, yeah. Almost try to pressure myself into being successful. Yeah. 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 I give myself an easy, if I was going to fail, I was going to pay the price for it in more ways than one. Right. Yeah. I, and you know, the other thing I think community does, or one other thing it does is, is for, for a long time, I, I really thought like I was the only person on earth who struggled with alcohol in the, in the ways that I did. Um, all the, all the, you know, cause I was, I was one of the, I didn't drink every day. I didn't, you know, if you looked on the outside, things looked pretty good. Um, and, but I, I had so much internal strife and I had so much, I had so much um, that I was just battling every day. Um, and I, I really thought I was the only one with those battles inside his head. And, and once I, one of the things that, that, that I, I realized as soon as I started, you know, I started, I read a lot of books um, that helped, but when I started going to those meetings, um, you know, you, you, you quickly realize there's a lot of people out there with similar stories and similar issues. And, and that helps knowing that it just, it takes, um, I don't know if it's shame. I don't know if it's embarrassment. Um, it just melts a lot of that away. And all of a sudden you don't feel like you're on an Island and you don't feel like you're the only person in the world who is struggling that way with, with alcohol and just, uh, just the fact of knowing that there's other people out there who do is for me was, was enormously helpful. Um, because I, I am, and I, I, I'm surprised I didn't think I needed community because I'm a connection person. I like making connections with people. I like talking to people. I like, that's how I process my feelings. I like to talk about them. And I, and I, at like, before I kind of found around the time I found that, you know, TLC community, I was kind of, I call it my connection crisis. I was, you know, out, I, I had this massive void that, that alcohol had filled and I was feeling the need to connect like more with my family 
and my kids and my spouse. And they were not really, they were just going about their business. Um, and I, I was, I, I was feeling the need to connect with people. And, um, I think I was feeling the need to connect with people who were going through something very similar. Um, and I, and I was, and I was grasping for that and I, and I wanted it. Um, even though I didn't, I didn't necessarily identify it as that at the time, at least before I, I started, uh, going to those online sobriety support group meetings. Um, but once I got in and once I got a little space from there, I realized, man, I really, I, I did need that. And it was extremely helpful. And just, just knowing that there's other people out there. Um, you know what, what hurt me though, was, um, I crave the socializing and what you're talking about, the connection. However, because of my anxiety issues that I was crushed by, which I learned I fueled by pouring beer on them for 30 years, I was afraid to do the socializing without alcohol. So when I, when I, the only time I was comfortable reaching out, getting into those groups, socializing, pouring my guts out, opening up was when I was, was drinking. Yeah. So you take the alcohol away and suddenly I was this, now things changed, but I was an anxiety riddled man. And you want me to go into a meeting and share with a bunch of people I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, and I forced myself to do it. And that curve was very quick because it immediately, you know, I, that I felt that acceptance and I felt yeah. I wasn't alone and I wasn't, you know, when I came in, it was going to be everyone that was there that, you know, quit drinking because they drank three beers a week was sitting in a circle going, oh my God, we, I guess we don't have problems. This guy's a real loser. You know, that's what, that's how I felt. But the anxiety, I, I lost my comfort level socializing or reaching out. And yeah, um, yeah. I, I never realized, I mean, this sounds so naive now, but yeah, I never realized what a, what a social lubricant, you know, alcohol was for me personally. Cause if you would ask me when I was drinking, I would have said, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty social person. I I'm fine. in any, you throw me down in any social setting, I can, I can make conversation with whomever. And then, you know, my first few, you know, social interactions when I wasn't drinking were extremely awkward. Uh, I felt like I had a neon sign above me, you know, with an arrow pointing to my head that said, this guy is not drinking. Yeah. Ask him why. Yeah. Don't uh, ask him about the game. Yeah. Ask him, uh, don't ask him about, you know, the weather. Oh. And the, the amount of time I would, I put into imagining interactions that were going to happen later that night that usually never happened. But I, I, the amount of time I put into imagining what so-and-so was going to say, well, how am I going to respond to that? And, Oh, well, I'm going to see so-and-so. Well, shit, they don't, they don't know I'm not drinking. They're going to, they're going to want, they're going to want me, they're going to want to buy me a drink. What do I say then? Um, I, I spent a lot of time on that and I felt very um, awkward and out of place in social settings, which I didn't like because I wasn't used to. And then I, I was like, is this what it's going to be like? Because um, this sucks. And uh, I'm not sure I'm ever going to like being in social situations again. And then I noticed after a while, I kind of developed this a, a newer, like more genuine sense of confidence in social settings, because guess what? I wasn't worried about whether or not I was drunk enough for the person I was talking to, to realize how drunk I was. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't counting how many drinks I had. And I wasn't worried about driving home. And I wasn't worried about saying something that I thought was really funny, but that's because I'm drunk and nobody right. else thinks it's funny. But it was uh, a damn good one. You just didn't get it. <laughs> I got I I sh I shudder to think about how many of those conversations I had over the years where I thought I was being extremely witty and charming uh and I was probably just being obnoxious um but I I I think I've developed a a new, a kind of more genuine sense of confidence cuz I just I feel better about myself as a non-drinker um, and I feel more in control, obviously, as a non-drinker. And that that breeds a different kind of comfortableness and confidence in social settings that I think is is 
much better than whatever is fueled by, you know, some, some drinks. Boy, it's interesting. Cause I, you can ask my wife and my daughter with this wedding that we went to, I was borderline pissed that we had to go to that this weekend. I, I was dreading it. I was, you know, looking back, I think I was completely afraid of the situation, the social awkward. Oh, here comes Jeff. He's got that uh, drunk show, uh, you know, and, and uh, they're all going to point and go, uh, you know, there, here comes alcoholic into the room. And I made so much out of it. And when I got there, I yeah. couldn't believe just walking in, I felt a confidence that I didn't even think I would have. I was amazed. Yeah. And I felt I, I, I was a different person there and I yeah. felt great. And I had a really good time, but it's, you know, the, the community, like you were saying about finding eight or nine people in your circle that didn't drink. Um, I don't, now that I've been sober, I'm finding them, but I didn't know of any. No, I didn't but it, and I'm not, it's not that I'm around drunks. It's just, you know, um, my wife's family are not alcoholics. Uh, there are weekends when they could, you know, you might convince someone else, but you know, they, they don't have problems with alcohol. Um, but they're beer drinkers, but I, I, I wouldn't be sitting here today if I could drink like her, like her family does. Right. I mean, they, right. they can take it or leave it. They can stop whenever without having any, okay, whatever. That's just, that's, that's fine. Yeah, I, and, and I, it, it's isn't that weird? Opposites. Oh, I, I it, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. But I don't. If you had said find eight or nine people, I don't know if I could have. I I I didn't know when I when I stopped. I take that back. My my dad stopped drinking twenty years ago, uh, and and he and I drank very similarly. We have similar personalities, and and we drank very similarly. Um, so I guess I knew my, my, my dad had, had given it up, but I, I didn't know anyone in my close or even not so close circle of, of friends and acquaintances that, that did not drink. I knew, I knew one, I, I went to law school with a, with a guy who, as long as I've known him, uh, did not drink. And um, it's funny, I sent him an email a couple weeks ago uh, and I said, Hey, I just want you to know, um, I always thought it was really weird that you didn't drink. Um, you know, I had known him, I met him in law school law school was a, a very, um, drunk experience for most of us. Uh, I mean, drinking was very prevalent. Um, so ever since I've known him, I, I worked with him for a while, but a lot of our social, all of our social interactions involved alcohol for me. Um, so I, I emailed him and I said, you know, I just want you to know, I, I, I used to think it was so weird that you didn't drink. Uh, well, I, and I said, I gave up alcohol, you know, a year and a half ago, 20 months ago, and uh, am enjoying it more than I ever thought I would. And I just want you to know, I don't think you're weird anymore. You were just in on the secret sooner than the rest of us. And uh, so I knew him. Uh, but yeah, that's that's about it. I just I didn't know. I didn't know a lot of people. Now I will say after I kind of came out publicly, like a, um, when I had given it up for a year, I put something out on social media and I did have, I did have a few people pop up and say, um, Hey, I don't drink either. If you ever want to get together for coffee, let me know. Mm -hmm. People who I had no idea did not drink. Um, but yeah, when I started, when I started this, I didn't, I didn't know hardly anyone. So you, you've got a, a unique situation because you are, um, I assume, a lawyer. You're in the legal profession. What There are a lot of people that don't want to do the community because I don't want anyone knowing that um, because of my kids or my uh, job or the um, promotion I'm going for, I don't want anyone to know that I have a drinking problem. So I'm going to keep it all to myself. How do you... What, what do you say to someone like that? Yeah, I, you know, that's, it's a good question because I think that's very common and I, I get that. Um, I think what got me past that is, 
I started enjoying sobriety. So I started enjoying it more than the reservations I had about people finding out. And I, I started enjoying it so much that I, I wanted to, I, I don't want to be, I don't think any of us want to be that guy. We don't want to be the, we don't want to walk into a room and start <laughs> where everyone's drinking and start talking to people about yeah. you know, how great it is not to drink. Um, I never want to be that guy. But if people asked, if they wanted to know. Oh, I God, wanted, run. Here he comes. Yeah, here he comes. Jeff, they're going to start. <laughs> he's got the book. Get out. Right, he's got the book. I, I, I wanted, I wanted them to know how much I was enjoying a, a, a life of sobriety, and I appreciated so much um, people telling their stories to me, and, and the stories I heard along the way that helped me because it, 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 every, every story I heard helped me in some way, and I appreciated that so much. I just felt kind of an overwhelming pull to tell my story to someone if it would help them. And, and, and the other part of it is, and this bugs my wife sometimes, cause she's the opposite of this, but I, I don't, I, I hate, um, I just, I don't like secrets and I don't mean my wife is the opposite of that. Like she loves secrets, I, but I, I'm an open book. Um, I don't like pretending that to, to be someone I'm not, I don't like pretending that I didn't have alcohol issues when I did. Um, it makes me feel like a, you know, a fraud and, um, you know, not that I'm, not that I'm proud of my alcohol issues per se, but I am proud that I did something about it. And I'm proud that I made improvements that I'm, that I'm so happy with. And so, um, I don't know. I, that, that kind of trumps everything for me, but, but I, you know, I get, I get all that stuff, especially from a professional standpoint. I get it. I think there's so many, you know, I think that can, I, I think the community part of the equation is critical. The, and it doesn't, I don't mean necessarily a huge bunch of people, but talking with others and hearing ideas and voicing concerns and voicing what's working, what's not working and bouncing ideas uh, and knowing that you're side by side with someone that's going through the same thing is critical. But there are a lot of, you know, for the, the, those that are wanting to protect the anonymity, you know, there, there are groups, that, you know, there's a, a little bit, I mean, hell, AA, AA has the word anonymous in it. You know, but but not just through AA. With any of the program, there is a little bit of an unwritten rule. You know, we stay. We, our groups are where we do this. You know, outside of this, I yeah. don't. You know, we we yeah. don't yell across the room. Uh, hey, Todd, great seeing you. At the <laughs> how many days sober are you now? You know, you you keep it between. But yeah, there are a lot of avenues. Whether the Zoom stuff, which you know, um, I, I look back at how people did this recovery without zoom without oh, phones yeah. that wow. hats off to anyone that was able that's brutal oh it had to be so much more isolating and mm -hmm. and and alone and that that's just that's just not good to do anything like this but especially something as hard as as recovery it's just it's that much harder in isolation and um and and i think it helps you know when when you're when you're at a point where you want to do something about your drinking you have enough negative shit coming your way from yourself. You know, you, you, you've got enough shame. You've got enough embarrassment. You've got enough regret. You've got enough feeling bad about things you've done. You've got enough of that. And I think in when you're, when you feel like you're the only person doing it and you're in and you're isolated, that just kind of adds to all that. Um, I, I heard, I don't remember. I, I don't remember who said this and I, and I absolutely should properly attribute this because it's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. It was me. But <laughs> to to this point, I heard someone say one time, if 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 you think if if you fucked a zebra, there's someone out there who's fucked too. Mm. <laughs> I thought that was the perfect kind of analogy for if you think you're the only one going through this, um, you're not. There's right. someone out there who has. And what I what I 
what I found so refreshing about the community that I got involved in, and I think this is true for any recovery community anywhere in any format, but the honesty of yeah. people and there's just, there's absolutely no bullshit. There's no pretense. There's no, there's no fakeness. It's just, and that's so refreshing. I think in, in today's age for, for anything, I think people are starving for authenticity and vulnerability and honesty, just out there laying it out on the table. Um, I think that's so great. And that's, you get so much of that in these recovery communities especially compare when you want to compare it to, you know, what you might get at your local country club or office or coffee shop with neighborhood people. Um, it's just, it's so refreshing, I think. Well, you know, the other thing is the, the support you get from another person that's going through it. I am a lousy, lousy supporter of Jeff. I will, I'll, I'll rip me to shreds. Now, you know, talk with Todd, I'll, I'll, I'll carry you. Yeah. And, and I feel crazy? justified yeah, with that? it. It's like, Todd, you're doing great. You're blah, blah, blah. But yeah. don't look to me to compliment myself because you are worthless. You are, you know, so I need, I need to get a little bit of a, um, the pat on the back, the encouragement, the, the lift, because I, 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 I'm, I, I stink at doing it myself. I think we're all like that. And it's, it's, it's really weird when you think about the, the advice you'd give to yourself and the talk you'd give to yourself is different from what you would, what I would give to you. It's, oh, yeah. but we, yeah, it's very common. And, and it's, it's hard to, it's hard to remember to give that same advice to, to yourself. And I, I always, when I'm talking to someone who's kind of early on and they mentioned something you know, I, uh, I went out to dinner Friday night and, and didn't have a drink. It's the first dinner I've been to you know, at a restaurant in, you know, 15 years where I didn't have a drink. You know, I try to make a point to say, that's that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And like, you know, pat yourself on the back for that. Because I think we're our natural tendency is to be like, yeah, you know, I took down I also, it. I also don't want to... Um... I want to be padded to a degree, but I don't want too much because if I fail, I'm just, I I'm creating, and maybe that's a good thing because I, I now have, you know, part of the, I'm on a freaking, you know, a show who knows how many people are watching, but yeah, everyone that's watching, I, you know, I, I don't want to get on this thing and say, Hey Todd, I'm, you know, I'm at day one again and yeah. admit my failure, but um. Yeah, there, there is maybe I don't do that because of I don't I don't want too much because I still have a little bit of a um I know that I'm a day to dayer in this thing. Well, and the other thing, another thing that's great about community is I I love talking to people who have who have been at this for like ten years or fifteen years because you know I sit here today and tonight and tell you you know everyone's I've heard people say I. I don't know if I'll ever drink again, maybe. And I, I think there's no fucking way I'm drinking again. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love I, not drinking. <laughs> I do I too. I love what I'm getting, not what I, I am, not, not what I gave, that I'm not having. I love what I'm receiving from this. Yes, I, I'm, I'm the same way. And I feel very strongly about, um, you know, that I will, I will never drink again. But you also hear, you know, that's, that's, that's a day that can be a dangerous mindset. And so mm -hmm. when I hear people who have been at it for 15 years and they talk about still going to meetings and still doing whatever it is they do, that's good for me to hear because it's, it's, it puts me in the mind frame of, okay, I I'm going to 10 years from now, I'm, I'm, I may still need to be doing this and that's fine. Um, well, look at, look at a cross country runner or someone that, that works out all the time they they stop lifting jogging whatever how quick do they they don't stay yeah. in that shape i mean they could have done this for 15 years yeah but if they yeah. stop getting up in the morning and working out or hitting the road and, and putting in the miles they will they will fall down big time yeah. they will they they've you've got to maintain it and i kind of feel the same thing well and i always riding. I, I always kind of stop when I, when I hear, when I hear someone tell a story about how they were, well, you, you know, you were, you went nine years 
when, when I hear someone say, I, 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 I went 15 years and, and I had a drink, um, you know, it's, I'm never glad that that happened to them, but I'm, I'm glad I hear those stories. Cause those always, those always make me stop and think like, damn, that's this. <laughs> I was never, I was never in the positive side of not drinking. I was in the negative side that whole nine years. I was always, I was always under of where, you know, I was never yeah. above. It was never a plus. Right. It was always. Yeah. I, but I'm, I'm okay. Right. I'm not where yeah. I want to be, but I'm okay. But I'm okay. I'm, I'm just under, you know, life could yeah. be better if I was drinking. It'd be great. Now that's the complete opposite. Now I was going to say thrilled by it. probably feels like a whole different world now to you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, how I handle situations, um, able to let things go that, I mean, a lot of tools I've learned in this, but, but I, I can't even, I, I'm, I'm blown away by what I've gotten from sobriety. I started this journey to, to stop drinking beer because that was gonna, and that has, that's a great little benefit. Yeah. But everything else I've gotten. Uh, wow. Couldn't never imagined it. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel the same way. And, and I wish that this is impossible of course, but I, I just, I wish there was a way to, um, other than just tell, tell people about it. I wish there was a way you know, if someone can get a glimpse of that early on, that can keep them going and and maybe get them through a rough patch where they might otherwise, you know, slip and 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 drink again. Um, I, 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 I feel like if if everyone knew kind of what was on the other side, um, boy, it'd be it'd be it'd be a lot easier to to quit drinking and get through those rough patches. But on the other hand part of the reason why it's so good, I think, is because you work your way through some shit to get there. I mean, that's like everything in life. Um, every, everything worth doing and worth having is is take some shit to get through. So where would you be in your journey right now without community? Boy, you know what? I, I think I would be closer to where you described you were um, uh, during your nine years. Um, I, I, I think I, I would be dry because of the bottom that I had hit, you know, with yeah. a year and a half ago when I, you know, started this thing. I think I'd still be abstinent, but I wouldn't be happy or not as happy. Yeah, I, I would not have reaped as many of the benefits as, as I had. Frankly, I wouldn't have made any of the connections I've made. And, and those connections, I mean, you know this. Uh, those, those, those connections are so, um, they're so meaningful and they're so helpful, um, to me. And, and they, they I, I had a conversation with someone today, um, who I had never met before, whose sister reached out to me and said, would you mind talking to my brother, uh, if he wants to? And I said, sure. And, and we ended up talking and we, we've got a, it sounds like a pretty similar story and had a wonderful conversation. Um, that I, you know, I hope, I hope he took something, you know, positive from, um, but that, that, and, and he's, and he sounds like someone who is, who is really serious about making some changes and he wants to, and those conversations, um, I mean, just, I love those conversations. It, 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 it brightened my day. Um, I feel like he's, I feel like he's in a, you know, better. I don't know where things are going to end up, but I feel like he's in a better spot after we had our conversation. I feel I I know I'm in a better spot after we had our conversation. I and I've had a few of those, and those none of those happen without the community I've 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 gotten involved in with with recovery. Yeah. You know, it just it it's it's added it's it's added more to my to my recovery and uh, to how much I'm enjoying. You know, sobriety. Um, immensely. Well, last question. Speaking of community, there's a rumor um, that at a Iowa Minnesota game years ago, um, you were seen running um, half naked uh, down uh, the forty, the thirty, the twenty with a ball high in the air. I think it's a picture behind you. Um, yeah. 
And are you going to deny that you were not on the sidelines as an intoxicated man at that game? <laughs> I, I, I won't. Um, no, I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> who's, who's listening to this? Yeah, exactly. Just uh, my, uh, my dad and my in-laws. You know? Okay, good. Uh, good. They, as, they long as, my, as, as long as my kids aren't, um, we're, we're good. Yeah. My, uh, my in-laws watch this uh, because it's, it's like a Netflix series. And I said, uh, <laughs> Hey, this is not. This isn't a Netflix series. This is. We're trying to. This is my life. Know, work on our sobriety. We're trying to save our. You know, work on ourselves. And she says, "Oh, I know, but I'm trying to. I'm dying. We're dying to find out if Todd and his wife got back together. Yeah. Is she going to let him see the kids this weekend?" Da, 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 da. So yeah, uh, we have a we have a heyday. But anyway, right. it's all good. Hey, Todd, thanks so much uh, for being on. Um, we. Uh, I, I know that you're doing some writing these days, correct? I am. I, yes, I'm, I'm trying uh, slowly, but surely. Well, we're going to start putting some of your stuff uh, uh, on the um, getting back to zero website. We start a blog site and I've started putting some in and we're going to start getting some guests. Um, and when I say guests, whoever wants to submit anything, we'll put it up, but just some, uh, some writing. So we'll, we'll get hopefully some of your uh, words up there as well. So that'd be great. Yeah. Fantastic. Love to look. um, Have a great one. We'll be back Thursday night at eight o'clock with another guest and um, got a great lineup coming up. We got some some uh, really good stuff. So I'm excited about this. But uh, thanks again, Todd. And keep talking, everyone and community. I think it's a I I think the 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 eyes have it versus the nays. So we agree on that. So uh, take care and we will talk to you Thursday evening. See everyone.